I've been a professional video editor for years, working for clients like Apple, Netflix, Postmates, College Humor, tons more. And if there's one thing I know, it's that you need to be able to work fast if you want to be able to be more creative, make more money, and avoid clients busting down your door asking for the next edit ASAP. Glam, hey, it's client. Sorry to barge in on you like this. It's really not a big deal, just on my lunch break here. But if you could get this edit done in the next eight minutes, then we won't have to both lose our jobs. That's just a little thing that's going on. I don't want to bore you with all the details, but I'll be back in seven minutes. So let's, let's get that done. Thanks. I better hurry. So let's jump into this project and just get started. What I've done is brought some footage from my last short film, Last Laugh Inc, into here. This is already colored and from the final edit of the film. So it's gonna be kind of a nonsensical example. I'm just here to show you the techniques and the principles involved. And if we don't have a lot of time, you don't wanna be going through all of your footage back and forth trying to find the little bits to pull out. My first tip for you to save time is to reduce the amount of footage that you're working with to as small an amount of footage as possible. And you wanna do that in the most fast, efficient, and non-destructive way possible. For me, that means using my video tracks to make my selects. Here's how I do that. I just play through the footage, and ideally you only just play through your footage one time to do this. I don't do this for every project, but I do it when I'm on a time crunch. Let's say I like the beginning of this clip, I hit C to make a cut, and then I bring this up to track two. That means I like this part of the shot. Maybe this shot is really nice and I'm gonna bring that up to track three because I like it even more than the last shot. So the hierarchy basically is track one, mm, not so great. Track two, there's potential. Track three, it's pretty good. And then track four, gold, baby. That's gonna make the edit. So let's say these are the only selects I wanna work with. I would just select them all and then go to another sequence that I'll call selects and simply paste it in. Now I've got all my selects and you see this hierarchy is maintained. The problem is, of course, they're all spaced out. Fortunately, there's a Premiere shortcut for that. On Mac, you just hit Option C and that closes the gap of all the clips. Now they're all together and I can see which clips I like the most and maybe spend more time on these track three and four clips being non-destructive with my edits here. I'm not even gonna touch this selects. I'm gonna copy and go into an assembly sequence and paste it in. That way I'll always have my selects untouched if I ever wanna go back and look for more stuff to pull into this assembly. The next point I wanna make is that when you're doing your assembly edit, your goal shouldn't be to have something perfect or even fun to look at. You need to be trying to make your first draft edit or your assembly edit as quickly as possible. Weird cuts and angles and gaps in your timeline, it doesn't matter. B-roll is really pretty and fun and easy to work with. You don't have to think too hard, you just throw that B-roll in somewhere, but it's not the most important thing. You're gonna waste a lot of time if you start thinking about your B-roll before you have your assembly edit, your story edit done. So I would just take my top tier clips, these track three clips, and let's say I ripple delete those, shift delete, Take all the other clips, drag them out here, go to the beginning of the timeline, shift command V, that's gonna give you an insert paste, which will make some room for you. And let's say this was the spine of my story, the best sound bites that I liked. I would make the edit with these. So maybe this was the beginning that I wanted, maybe this was the end that I wanted, then maybe this was the crucial middle sound bite that I wanted. The point is you don't have to work chronologically. If you see something that looks like a good ending, just throw it where you think the end will be. Same for the beginning, same for the middle. And you'll cross these bridges, these big gaps in the timeline here later. The important thing is to work your problems from big to small. That's how you get through an edit quickly. I might take the next track of selects, select them, copy them, ripple delete them, insert, paste them, close the gap, and start working with these shots, you know? Maybe for example, this shot works great somewhere around there. So we're just kind of filling in the edit piece by piece. But the important thing is we started with the story and then we worked our way from there to making it flow and be pretty and all of that. So let's say that this jumbled mess here was our assembly. I would just copy and paste this into a new sequence, again, being non-destructive here, saving our work as we go. So this new sequence is just going to have our assembly, and then we start fine tuning in here to get like a full rough cut. Tip number three is use shortcuts. Learn them, 
master them, and then start creating your own. Some of my most commonly used shortcuts that a lot of novice editors don't know about are, for example, top tail editing, which is, for example, say I wanted to just start this clip when he grabs his sunglasses right here. A lot of people would just go to the razor tool, make a cut here, go to the select tool, click this, delete it. That's how I used to edit. I cut my first feature film that way, just hunting and pecking for every little tool and every little thing. I, it took absolutely forever. What I would do now is just go to the part where I wanted the clip to start, say right there, and hit the letter Q. That's gonna give me a top edit where it made a cut and it dragged that clip and everything after it to the beginning of where that clip was. So it's a great way to save a lot of time and you can do it again at the end of a clip. Say I wanted it to end right here, I would just hit W and it's gonna drag the later clips forward to meet that end of this clip. Great, great time-saving tool, top tail editing, Q and W. But if you don't have time to learn every shortcut, here's a great plugin that I recommend. They're not sponsoring me or anything like that. I just really, really love them. If I hit option space, I get Excalibur. This is just like Spotlight if you use Mac. You can basically type in anything. Let's say I wanted Lumetri color. I start typing it in and it comes up. I click it and now it's automatically been applied to this clip and I can do whatever I want to it. Pretty amazing. So if you wanna try out Excalibur for yourself, it is a paid plugin, it's $75. You can get it at knightsoftheeditingtable.com. It is so worth it if you edit for a living especially. If you save a half an hour on every edit, how long does it take before you've saved yourself a full day of work? But again, the big picture is, Learn shortcuts, master shortcuts, they will save time. All of that time compounds with every edit that you do. And if you don't know what shortcuts to learn or if you feel like you already know all the shortcuts you need to know, I really encourage you to take note of what functions you're doing over and over in Premiere that you're not using shortcuts for. Then you should create a macro, a preset, or a shortcut for that function and save yourself all that repetitive work. And if there's no way to do that, then maybe you should even change your workflow so that you don't keep running into this time suck. Don't spend forever doing something that you suck at in editing or something that you just straight up hate doing. Find a way to delegate it either to somebody else who's a specialist or to a tool that you have, or to yourself at a later time. For example, I kind of suck at motion graphics. I'm not going to spend forever doing that on my own edits. Lamb, hey, client again. Listen, hate to barge in on you, but I just wanted to say we need some animated text that flies in and it has this real goofy fun style. And it says, welcome to the joke store, because that's going to be the title of the film. So if you could just do that, because we don't have budget for a designer or an animator, and we need it in about 60 seconds or we're both going to be fired. And by that, I mean, you're going to be fired. All right, I'll be back in 60 seconds. Thanks, buddy. Keep up the great work. Let me delegate this to my library of templates at motionarray.com, sponsor of this video. Whether it's a client project or a short film, whatever, Motion Array has assets that are gonna make it way easier to get to the finish line. Talking about templates, presets, stock footage, stock music, sound effects, stock photos. You can pay for a month or a year and boom, you get access to thousands of different resources that you can use in your videos whenever you want. So let's try fun title. Let's say that this cartoonish style fits in with what we're doing with this video. I'm going to import it, final. I can see it right here. Now I don't have the font. I could go into the motion array folder in my finder and get the font installed, or I can just go to replace fonts and project. So let's replace it with something like Insana Burger. Yeah, we're gonna edit the text and it's going to say, Welcome to the, we can just say, joke store. Then I can just paste it into my edit just like this, but I think it'd be cooler without the background, just straight up over the footage like this. And let's say we wanna put some sound effects to that. I could type in a whoosh for a sound effect. Let's download this whoosh transition. And there it is. Let's try this one. That'll do, throw that in there. Let's throw that down here. And maybe I need some music too. Mm, mess in the kitchen. There it is, let's download that. 
And here it is, with time to spare. This would have taken me forever to design on my own and put together. There's animated text, it's going in and out, there's easing, there's a design on the text, there's a wiggle to it, there's color, there's all kinds of things going on. And if you wanna be able to pull in all these kinds of templates and presets and effects that you don't wanna create from scratch yourself every time something like this comes up, then just use the link in my description, you'll get $50 off an annual subscription to Motion Array. Really great resource for any editor. Delegation is a really big topic. There's also assistant editors. If you're an editor and you're getting to the point where you just don't have the time or bandwidth to take on all the work that you're being offered, in that case, bringing on an assistant editor is going to allow you to take on more work, earn more money, and spend more of your time focused on the parts of editing that you actually want to be doing, you know, the creative stuff, the fun stuff. But if you aren't able to bring in an assistant editor, you can still delegate. You can delegate it to yourself at a later time. The idea there is task switching is very mentally taxing. Don't switch from making cuts to suddenly throwing in color correction to suddenly doing audio mixing. Too many different types of work at the same time is going to drain your focus too much. Try to do it assembly line style where you do all of your edits and then you do all of your color correction later, audio mixing in one pass, your sound design in one pass, work big to small and by type of work whenever possible. And the last point I want to say is something that you might have noticed the whole time we were working on this video, which is I have templatized everything. Let's scroll up here. Let's look at this. We already have these bins made before I even started editing this project. I already had sequences in here already created. Pretty much every professional editor has a template for say their Premiere project like this. They have a template for their folder structure might look something like this. And for me, every time I have a new project, all I'm doing is copying this into the relevant folder, editing even faster project. And now I'm able to start this new project with all my folders already set up. But you can go a lot deeper with templates than just a project or a folder structure like most people are gonna tell you. I've even templatized my audio track mixer so when I'm making a YouTube video, it already has a few audio effects on track one, which is where I'm gonna put my A-roll audio. Just every little thing that you can think of that will save you time, just do it. And then you only have to do it once. You don't have to worry about it. That applies to export presets. That applies to effect presets. That applies to even your daily routine. There are some people like Steve Jobs or whoever that are just gonna wear the same thing every day because it's one less decision they have to make that day. I have a template not for my wardrobe, but for how my day is structured. I know I'm gonna have a coffee in the morning. I'm gonna do the hardest thing I have to do the first thing after that coffee. I'm gonna have lunch. I'm gonna have another coffee. I'm gonna do the second hardest thing I have to do after that second coffee. That's just my template for the day. Templatizing your life like this reduces the number of decisions that you have to make throughout your day. The less decisions you have to make, the more brain power you have to apply to your creative projects, I think. So to create templates like this for your own life, you have to ask yourself at the end of a project, what was my biggest pain point on this project and how can I make it easier for myself next time? Lamb, guess what? The boss absolutely loved the video. Finally recognized my vision. So thanks for doing all the grunt work. If you can go ahead and crank out the one by one, the nine by 16, the four by five, and make a 15 second cut down of all those two, that'd be great. Then you can wrap up, get out of here, turn the lights off when you leave, lock everything up. I'm gonna go do some drugs you haven't even heard of yet. So I'll see you next time. Thanks again, pal. Good work with you. Make a great team, huh? That son of a bitch.